I was saved. And now I love the life I'm living because I know how God my Father set me free. Yes, I love the life I'm living because I know that I I shared with you a little bit Sunday about the doctrines of the world and I touched on this whole monkey pox junk that's going around. I want you to know that back when the AIDS epidemic started, it was prevalent in the homosexual community. And because of what the homosexuals were doing and their blatant disregard for health, for nature, and most of all for God, eventually that disease spread out from there and it uh, infected heterosexuals. And the way it did that was through needles, transfusions, this sort of thing. It affected people that weren't homosexual is what I'm telling you. So, the devil and the perversion that he wrought in these people's minds started with them first and foremost and then was it expanded to people who had no, no they were living a proper life. It's um, kind of like an insurance policy on your automobile a vast majority of your premium for your insurance policy is for people who don't have insurance. Okay? People that just drive cars, cause all kinds of damage, and don't have insurance. They get stopped by the police. The police writes them a ticket, maybe, that they'll never pay. And then they just go on down, down the road without a license without insurance just to hit another car. This is what happens in our community. The police do not tag that car and tow that car. That's what should happen. Okay? They just let them go on to hit somebody else and cause other problems. So what happens is when somebody like that hits you, they don't have insurance. Your insurance has to cover it because you have full coverage. If you have full coverage, if you don't have full coverage, you're screwed. You know. And someone's going to listen to this and say, I don't like that word screwed. Right? Well, don't listen to it. Go to somewhere else and listen to a teaching. It's true. It's true. So what they have to do is they have to incorporate their loss in your policy. And that's why your premiums are so high. Your premiums, premiums are so high because you're paying for the people that are driving on the roads that don't have insurance. Okay? So, bad people or people that do bad things make good people pay. That's the same way it's going to work with the AIDS and the same way it's going to work with the monkeypox. People who do bad things, who disrespect their bodies, who disrespect nature, who disrespect God, the homosexual community, instead of stopping what they're doing, they're going to continue to do what they do, and it's going to spread from that group, and it's going to jump into the heterosexual avenue of it. And then good people are going to suffer. Now, it's not going to flood like it used to, like it's flooding over in the homosexual community. But that's how it starts. And that's the devil's way of striking out and making, once again, a believer susceptible and pay for the problems. So, I just wanted to add that so you know what's going to go down the road. But tonight, I want to share with you the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. You can call it what you want. Now, there are different takes on 
what the kingdom of God is and what the kingdom of heaven is. And some people believe that the kingdom of God is one thing and some people believe that the kingdom of heaven is something else. And what I want to do with you tonight is I want to go to God's word and I want you to listen to God's word and then allow the word to tell you what the kingdom of God is and what the kingdom of heaven is. So the question is, is there a difference between the phrase kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven? That's the question that's on the floor. Now, to start with, you should know that the phrase kingdom of heaven is used 32 times in the Bible. It's used 32 times in the New Testament, and it only appears in the Gospel of Matthew. Okay? The kingdom of heaven only appears in Matthew's Gospel. The phrase kingdom of God is used 68 times in the New Testament and it's spread out throughout 10 different books in the New Testament. So 68 times you'll have kingdom of God in 10 books, Matthew or Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, or not Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and epistles and 32 times you'll have kingdom of heaven, and that is strictly in Matthew's gospel. So, there are different thoughts on what they mean. Some have noted the Jewish nature of Matthew's gospel, in keeping with the custom not to speak the name of God because it was too holy. That was a good thought, I thought, used to think. But then when you go to Matthew's gospel, you see the word God a whole bunch of times in Matthew's gospel. You just don't see the phrase kingdom of God. So I said to myself, if you're not going to speak the word God because it's so holy in the gospel and they're going to use that for a reason why they use the term kingdom of heaven, then they shouldn't say the word God in the gospel of Matthew, period. So I don't believe that anymore. Some believe that the kingdom of heaven in the gospel of Matthew is referring to the millennial kingdom of the future, but that can quickly be dismissed by reading several records. So what I want to do with you tonight briefly, and then what I want to encourage you to do for yourself is to just take a concordance and look up kingdom of heaven and look up kingdom of God and read the records for yourself so you can have this cemented in your mind what actually is going on. In Matthew chapter 4, I'm going to start there and I'm going to read to you a record in Matthew 4. Now I have taken a lot of time to develop this record because I want this record to be very, very, very clear to you. And I want you to see that this record, when we read in Mark's gospel, okay, is the identical time and place and record. That's, what I, that's why I've taken the time to do this. So you can go to Matthew chapter 4, and beginning in verse 1, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights he was afterwards and hungered from that time Jesus began to preach and say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren Simon and Peter or, or, pardon me, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, and they were casting their nets into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Simon and Andrew, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets, and they followed him. 
And going on from thence, he saw two other brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, Zebedee, and John, his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called unto them. So it's interesting to note that the first four disciples, which later became apostles, that Jesus Christ called were two sets of brothers. Okay? Mending her net, and he called them, and immediately they left the ship and their father and followed Jesus. Now, in the preceding record that we just read, you have Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And after that, Jesus heard that John was in prison. He goes and he dwells in Capernaum. Look at verse 13. Leaving Nazareth, he came and he dwelt in where? Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast of the borders of Zebulon and Natathalim. Then the scripture teaches, verse 17. From that time, Jesus began to say, Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is what? At hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, verse 18, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, Andrew, his brother, cast in her net. And he said, come with me, I'm going to make fishes of you, of men. They left. He sees two more, James and John, his brother. They're with Zebedee in the boat. That's their daddy. He says, come with me. And immediately they left. And they followed Jesus. So the context is as follows. Jesus, for 40 days and 40 nights, was tempted of the devil. When the devil ends his temptation, verse 11 of chapter 4 of Matthew says, angels came and ministered unto him. Then Jesus finds out that John is in prison. And he goes to Galilee and ends up in Capernaum, which is nearby. Okay? You can find that out in verse 12. When Jesus heard John was in prison, he departed to Galilee. 13, leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is on the sea coast in the borders, such and such. Then in verse 17... He begins to call men to repentance and he preaches, he begins to preach the kingdom of heaven. Verse 17 says, from that time forward, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of what? Heaven, heaven is at hand. Okay. As he's walking by the Sea of Galilee, he sees two brothers and he calls them to ministry. They follow. He continues to walk. He sees two more brothers. They follow. Okay? That's the Gospel of Matthew. Now, you know what's going on. Now let's go to Mark. And let's look at the identical record in the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 1, beginning in verse 12. Immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. 13. And he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan with all the wild beasts, and the angels came and ministered unto him. So this again is talking about the temptations. All right? Matthew goes into great detail about the temptations, Mark just covers it briefly. Okay? But it's the same record. There were, Jesus only went into the desert one time to be tempted of the devil for 40 days after he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Okay? Mark notes the temptations where Matthew goes into detail, but it's the same record. Now, we're in Mark chapter 1. Let's go now to verse... Now, after that John was put in prison... Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of what? God. See it? He heard that John was, John was put in prison. It says in Matthew, he heard John was put in prison. In Matthew, it says he came preaching the kingdom of what? 
heaven. Mark says, temptation, angels minister to him, heard John was in prison. After that, he starts preaching the kingdom of what? God. Saying the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. In Mark 14, the record after John was put in prison, it says that Jesus heard about John's imprisonment. Jesus comes to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. In verse 15, he invites all people to repent and believe the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, when he's preaching and he says this, he starts to walk by the Sea of Galilee. And the first two brothers, Simon and Andrew, he sees, he then calls them to ministry. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were what? Fishers. We read this in Matthew, right? And I'm simply showing you it's the identical record. That's why we're going here. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you become fishers of what? Men. Straightway they forsook their nets, and they what? Followed him. Now Jesus continues to walk, as we remember in Matthew. And who does he see next? He sees what? Two more brothers, right? Remember we read that in Matthew? Well, let's look at verse 19. And when he, Jesus, had gone a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the ship mending their nets. And straightway he calls to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants, and they went what? After Jesus. Okay? It's this identical record. Same thing going on. Matthew tells it in the gospel. We get to Mark. He tells it in his gospel. Matthew tells it. He says Jesus was preaching the kingdom of what? Heaven. Heaven. Mark tells it. Same Jesus. Same record. But Mark says Jesus is preaching the kingdom of what? God. God. Okay. In the Gospel of Matthew, it's called the kingdom of heaven. In the Gospel of Mark, it's called the kingdom of who? God. Okay. Matthew 19. Matthew 19, verse 16. Here's another record. And we're considering the phrase kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven to see if there's a difference between the phrase. In Matthew 19, beginning in verse 16, this is what it says. And behold, one came unto him and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have what? Eternal life. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There's none good but one, that's God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. And he said unto him, Which? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And the young man saith, Unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth, what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell all that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. And it always gets around to, you know, when you come to the pocketbook. That's where the rubber meets the road for people. They're okay until it comes to the pocketbook. But when the young man heard the saying, that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He had a lot to lose. Well, then said Jesus unto his disciples, 
Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 24, And again I say unto you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of what? God. God. See? Now, same context. Talking about the same rich man. You understand? He just uses two different examples. The first example, he says that it's hard for a rich guy to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And he says it's easier for a camel than for a rich guy to enter into the kingdom of what? God. Now, there's not two kingdoms. See? He's talking about the same kingdom. First verse, he says kingdom of heaven. Second verse, he decides to use the word kingdom of God. In the parallel accounts of Mark and Luke regarding this same scripture, and the one he uses, the kingdom of God in Mark and Luke, and in Matthew he uses the kingdom of heaven. But you can see that it's talking about the same rich young man. Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there had not risen a greater than John what? You guys know this verse, right? You heard it before. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. Now, we were talking about John. If you go to Luke, we're going to look at the identical record. Verse 28 of chapter 7. Listen to what the scripture says once again. For I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there is not one greater prophet than John the Baptist. Talk about the same thing, right? Same phrase. Just about, word for word. But he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Matthew says, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. But when you get to Luke's gospel, it says, he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Identical records, talking about the same thing. Matthew uses the phrase, kingdom of heaven. Luke uses the phrase, kingdom of what? God. It's talking about the same thing, though. Matthew chapter 13. Verse 11. He answered, and he said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, these things are done in what? Parables. Okay. Talking about the same record. One place he calls it the kingdom of heaven. Matthew records it. When Mark goes to record it, he records it as the kingdom of what? Kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. And he said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and become as a little child, or as become as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of... It's a gospel of Matthew, so what's he going to say? Heaven. Heaven. Okay, so the teaching is, you got to get converted, you got to 
receive it like a little child or you're not going to get, be able to get into the kingdom of heaven because of a child's heart, etc. Now, let's go to Mark chapter 10, verse 15. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. He's speaking the same truth. In the Gospel of Matthew, it was the entering into the kingdom of what? Heaven. Heaven. In the Gospel of Mark, you've got to become like a little child, entering into the kingdom of what? God. So, that should be enough to get you started. You can go and do the rest for yourself. But there's at least a dozen other parallel identical records that you can find very easily in the Bible, in the Gospels, and compare one Gospel account from the Gospel of Matthew, because that's where the Kingdom of Heaven appears, to another Gospel account of the other Gospels. Now, you know, Matthew, Mark and Luke use it a lot. You'll, you'll find a little bit in John, but it's mainly you'll see the phrase Kingdom of God in Mark and Luke. You'll see it in John too, but not as much. Okay? And you'll be able to see that it's talking about identical records. Jesus Christ saying the same thing about the same topic. And when you work it, if there's a nuance in it, that the kingdom of God means, I don't, know, I don't know, that's where God is king. And kingdom of heaven means God's king over heaven or whatever. I don't know. I mean, I can't see a difference. What I can see is that it's talking about the same thing and referring to the same place. It's God's kingdom because the truth of the matter is God's king over everything. Amen. Okay. So, but I believe that the scripture teaches that the phrase kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven are talking about the same thing. And I believe that from what I've shown you tonight in the scripture how Jesus Christ referring to the same thing so many times and then in one verse and then the next verse he uses kingdom of heaven the one time and then in the next verse he uses kingdom of God with the rich young ruler talking about how hard it is there wasn't no change there and so it's interesting but the, the, the warning is this and it's, and it's like this with everything in life sometimes we believe things because we hear them and we respect and love people we hear them from and there's nothing wrong with that. But the Bible has to be the ultimate goal, the ultimate authority. And if you can't show it from the scriptures, no matter how much you love or how much you want to believe something, you know, God's given us his word and he deserves more respect than that. So... Instead of asking God to change his mind to line up with what you want to believe, I think it would be a good idea if we changed our mind and lined up with what he wants us to believe. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thank you. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And remember, if we are shut down for some type of censorship reason, you can always check out our videos at www.cvm.church. Thank you for your patronage. This was brought to you by Chapter and Verse Ministry. I was lost, my world was filled with tears and troubles, times were tough. Evil days, when living life was one big bother, one big blood. Running hard with no escape from darkness inside. 
I was enslaved Then God stepped in And by His mercy, love and kindness I was saved And now I love the life I I know how God my Father set me free, yes, I love the life I'm living, cause I know that I know it's Christ in me. Sometimes I forget that I've been given my life's dream. Peaceful days with Jesus Christ's heart inside me, life supreme. Then I stop, put off the world, and thank the Father for His Son. Times are great, my sorrow's gone, my life's been made right, I have won, and now I I know how God my Father set me free, yes, I love the life I'm living, cause I know that I know it's Christ in me, well I know that I know, I know that I know. Yes, I know that I know it's Christ in me.